What is going on everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today's video is going to be in answers to the comments of our last video. So I recently posted a video about the largest ice shack on the market right now and my new shack for the 2020 ice fishing season and that is the Otter Monster Lodge that is laying behind me right here. Um, picked it up, showed it to you guys, uh, talked a little bit about why I had sold the Jason Mitchell um, and kind of why I was going to this style and that was for one main reason and that was room and I tell you guys what you left a ton of comments a lot of questions and I greatly appreciate it so I'm going to answer some of those today the uh, the questions of how long does it take to set up how big it really is it um, what are your plans for the inside what are you gonna do for lighting all that great stuff so we're gonna start out here. Um, it's a nice day. I, I've already seen some of you guys up north. You have already been out on the ice and catching some fish. I am super jealous, but here in the Midwest, we're doing Midwest things like bouncing between, you know, 20 degrees and 70 degrees every other day. So we're still not even close. Um, in fact, I'm out here by a, one of our lakes and there's guys out fishing right now. I'm sure they're walleye fishing and maybe catching some crappies, stuff like that too. But I'm gonna take some time. We're gonna set this up and I'm gonna show you just how easy and fast this shack really is and why I love it so much so far. So we're gonna jump into it. I've got a mic on, um, it's, there, it's a little windy today. So we're gonna set up this GoPro. We're gonna get this set up. We're gonna do a complete setup time, a complete teardown time. And then we're gonna go back to the garage, reset this up. I'm gonna show you all the awesome stuff that I have for the inside and what I'm doing for that lighting, which was the big thing that you guys were bringing up. So if you guys are new here, I hope you will consider subscribing, helping smaller channels like this grow. I greatly appreciate you guys taking some time out of your day to watch it. Leave me a comment, hit that like button, turn on those bell notifications, all that normal good stuff. I hope you'll consider it. But uh, right now, let's pull this thing out of the bag, set it up, see how long it takes. Okay, so the timer on my GoPro just passed four minutes. So we'll say right at four minutes. Um, this is actually take number two because I did this the entire first time and forgot to record anything. So I kind of already know the answer to this, but let's, uh, let's see, right? So first things first, um, the Otter Monster Lodge, when you get it set up, is roughly at the widest point, nine feet wide and about 14 feet long. Um, weight on it is really nice. This thing is only about 65 to 70 pounds. And the bag itself is really nice too because it's got this plastic liner in it that helps get it in and out of that bag super easy. It'll also help with some moisture, but I do wanna say that that is one thing um, I would not do is I would not put this thing back in wet. Um, and the reason for that is I don't want to deal with any kind of mold, mildew, anything of that nature. I never put my shack back in wet. It goes in my truck and then I set it up in my garage and home and let it dry out. So let's move this a little, move it this way and we'll just start popping these out. So just like a pop-up tent, it's got really nice heavy handles on it um, so that you can pop these out. But it goes up really quickly. I've only set this thing up, well, this is my third time ever setting it up now because the second time I was not recording anything. But for one person, it's really not too bad. Like I said, the handles are really convenient. Um, this thing's really well built. The poles are very thick poles. I think they're like 11 mil poles or something like that is what I read. Right. And then I'm gonna slide this thing over. So you guys can see it. Um, basically the entire thing is set up, except the ceiling. So we'll go in, we'll pop up the ceiling. One, two, and we're done. That was it. So how do we do on time? Two and a half minutes. It says 640. We got 640 on both cameras. So roughly two and a half minutes to get this thing set up with one person. 
Now, does that mean that's as easy as it's gonna be when you're out and you're going through snow and it's freezing and you've got giant gloves on and everything else? No, so let's say it takes you twice as long, five minutes, big deal. We have 114 square feet of fishable area in this thing. Like I said, about nine feet at its widest, 14 feet long. That's gonna let you stand up, move around, or if you're like me and you wanna be out for a long period of time, it is nothing to go ahead and throw a cot in here, a floor in here, all that good stuff. So there's a look in. In my opinion, this is super, super easy and it's a heck of a lot lighter. It fits in the back of my truck. Um, for those of you that care, I drive a Tundra, but it fits in the back of the truck. I can shut the tailgate. It also fits on the back seat. So this thing's not even six feet long when it's in the bag. So you can throw it in the cab of your truck, lock it up, throw in your auger, everything else. It fits in a sled. It is outstanding. So now let's do the reverse. Let's see how long it takes to get back into the bag. But again, I wouldn't do that if it was wet. So, biggest thing now is just getting a bunch back up, getting the band on it. That helps kind of restrict it in the bag. So, this part can be a little bit of a process, especially with one person. Um, I just try to kind of bunch it up and get the strap around it. So that it's a little bit more manageable. To work with so yeah let's kind of get it closer over here all the feet up last one here just like that kind of hold on to those and get our strap Not my strap. That's gonna slow us down. There we go. Cinch it down. Get the bag open. And we're almost there. like that. Oh, come on Mike. There you go. And you gotta pull it together, get it zipped up. Get that strap in there. And done. that take I'm at 12 minutes I'll uh, I'll have to look at what time we started I think it was about eight minutes so roughly four minutes to get it down back in the bag but again I, I wouldn't be doing that if it was wet so that's the only thing for me is I just throw it in the truck and then let it dry out but if you guys are looking for an ice shack 
to fish out of this winter and you're like me and you just want something that has a lot of room maybe for yourself so you can stay overnight maybe to bring some other people along with you um obviously i haven't had this thing out on the ice yet but in my opinion i'm loving it so far so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back home we're gonna get this thing reset up and i'm gonna show you all the goodies inside so stay with me don't leave yet i got some cool things including a very cheap an easy lighting solution for all of your guys running shacks and just want a battery powered light source. I've got something for you. So, all right guys, so I'm back in the garage, got everything reset up. Um, hopefully that answers some questions for you guys. This is a giant shack. There is a ton of room in here, but with that, it is a relatively nice compact size. Like I said, it breaks down to under six feet in the bag. I can throw it in the back of the truck. I can throw it in the cab of the truck, which is awesome to be able to lock it up, travel, whatever I need to, have the sled, have the auger, have everything, and it fits in the back of the truck or in the physical rear of the cab. Um, outstanding, absolutely love it. That was one of the things that I hated with my other one was that when it was in the back of the truck, I couldn't shut the tailgate and lock it um, so, you know, going up north, traveling, staying at hotels and stuff, it would have to be in the back of the truck. It was exposed. I always tried to back in the truck to like the wall of uh, the hotel or wherever I was at um, to kind of stop or prevent it from disappearing overnight. Um, so that is just another reason I love this thing. But the main reason is this size. So I can walk all the way across this shack. It's got a low point. That is where it does um kind of hit my head i'm 6'3 so for those of you shorter than that probably not much of an issue um but here's a quick look here's what we've got and how i've rigged this up so far all right so if we look at this thing from the doorway here's what we've got so i have set this up so that we essentially have half of this area as like the livable space and the other half is kind of the fishing area and this is already more space than i had just in this little area uh than we had with that flip over shack so it is still a large improvement not including even this side of the shack so for all the stuff that i've added so far here's where we're at um i put in the eva i think it's eva foam flooring this just comes from amazon it's super cheap you can get cases of it um, and in bulk, which is really nice. And then this is my cot that I'm going to be bringing in. So super big cot. That way I can fit and sleep on here and have a ton of room to kind of stretch out. But I'm thinking this may also kind of double as a chair. So I'm going to have, I'm guessing I'm going to bring a chair anyway, just to have something to lean back against. Um, but I can, I can sit on the side of this thing and then it is massive. So I actually fit on here. My feet aren't off the end. I'm fitting on it. So throwing a sleeping bag on there, um, I'm gonna be nice and comfy, I can tell you that much. On this side, we've got a table. I think this is either a five foot table, I think is what it is. But I will have essentially big lithium battery sitting here to run everything. Um, all of this food, camera equipment, all that stuff will go over here. And then I will have a nice place that my feet will be dry, they'll be a little bit warmer, um, the cot fits nicely, and it doesn't even have to run this way. Um, I can actually fit the cot horizontally up here too, um, and there is still plenty of space to kind of rearrange through here. But one of the things I really thought you guys might be interested in is the lighting situation. Um, I looked at a bunch of different things, everything from the hub lights, which are stupid expensive, to I think it's otters leds there's like it's like a three pack or something i think it's like 70 bucks like they clip on or something of that nature i don't know they, they all seemed stupid expensive so to save you guys some time and hassle here's what i did um my dad actually told me about um some truck bed lights so um led lights that they run along truck beds he ordered some for his boat for the compartments of his boat um and they came in this package and i really like them so i got on amazon and looked at what amazon had they had some really nice ones look like some really high quality led ones 
So I ordered a couple different sets, they all came in. I compared them to the ones that he got off eBay and they don't compare. So mine were like two to three times more expensive from Amazon. I thought they would be brighter. I thought they might be more of a white light. They're not at all. Um, so I'm gonna tell you guys, I can throw the link in the description of this video. These come off of eBay. What they are is they are truck bed lights. They come in an eight pack. So there's three LEDs on each strip. There are eight strips in a package and they are 10 bucks and that is it. So this entire strip right here, essentially coming new out of the package, this whole thing is $10. Um, they are waterproof. Each one has three LEDs. They've got a 3M thing on the back. They chain connect. All you have to do is undo this connector and you can hook multiple, multiple sets together. They do not draw anything. These have been on for a while now since I got back and reset this up. There is, there is no heat on these things at all whatsoever. They do not get hot. They do not get hot. They're not gonna cause damage to the shack and they're super easy to put up. Um, so brand new, um, this is kind of what they look like. So I've got them new up here. These have been modified and this is what I'm going towards. I'll explain it in a second. But brand new out of the pack, all I'm doing is I ran it from my battery. So I've got like an alligator clip or in this case with um, this style of battery, I've just got this, I don't know, terminal clip on there. But what I'm doing is I'm gonna run them up the side and then all I am doing right now until I find maybe a better solution or if I even want to, because this is so portable, all I'm doing is I push up, tuck it in, and I'm done. And I just tuck them in on the rail and they sit there and they do not move. And you can put as many on each rail as you want. Um, so right now I've got this side set up with three per rail. I think I'm gonna change it to four. I think I'm gonna go four on each side. That way each side of my tent, of my shack here would have a set so like these two rails it would take one set of lights then another set of lights so two sets per side um, so essentially I'm going to be lighting this entire thing for $40 and that is it and for someone that is very particular about their lights and their light bulbs if you like the cool white like the clear crisp like daylight style light these are what you want if you want the warm white the kind of yellow light I absolutely hate that um, these are not for you. Um, but that cool, crisp, just white light, these are perfect. So when they come out new out of the package, this is a brand new setup here. I just hooked it up. You can see there is excess cord. So if I'm going to run three or four of these, there is just a lot of excess cord and you can take them apart and chain more together. Um, so what I've been doing is I've been coming through and I'm actually cutting all the wires going through with some butt connectors and redoing all the connections and again sealing it up so it's nice and waterproof um, we're not going to have any issues with you know having some humidity in here and some dampness some wetness so i'm going through just shortening up all of these so that it's nice and pretty and my ocd is happy and then i'll run this back here and it'll just sit on my battery but all the wiring is up out of the way they are nice and tucked together it is going to be awesome, but I've only made it through two sides now. So I've got a little bit more to go. Okay, you guys can kind of see it glowing from the outside. But here's what it looks like on the inside. Looks pretty cool. I don't even have all of them on. I have an entire set sitting here that I haven't even hooked up because I was showing them to you guys. So it's gonna be even brighter, but I'm running a standard GoPro. There's no brightness changes to any of this, nothing of that nature. This is what it looks like. And I don't even have this half of the lights aren't even on. So no matter what side you go to, if you got guys fishing in here, you're staying out late, you're staying out overnight, you can absolutely see everything. These lights are outstanding. Super happy with them. I do what I'm done. If I want to move, all I do, is just start pulling them off. Pulling them off one at a time. And then again, just put them back up. All I'm doing right now is tucking it. And is that probably gonna have its wear on the wires at some point? Probably, I would say so. But I think they're gonna be pretty good as long as you take some care of them. And for 10 bucks, 
You replace an entire chain of them for next to nothing. All right, so that's gonna do it for me today and this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Two and a half minute setup, about a four minute tear down to get back into the bag. And um, with the accessories and stuff, if you guys have ideas, drop them down in the comments below. This lighting though, I am super happy with. I think it's gonna last a very long time. These do not draw anything from like a lead acid battery or you know a lithium, which is what I'm switching to. Um, for this for this season. So the lithium batteries, I know we're gonna power this thing and we are gonna have a ton of spots to punch some holes, set up camera gear, have a couple people in here. It is gonna be outstanding. I'm looking forward to it. You northern people that are already getting out on ice, again, super jealous, but I think I'm gonna be driving north to join you here shortly. So that itch is strong. And I would be remiss if I did not mention to you guys, those of you that are new here, um, the companies that I work with are all in the description below. If you guys want to save some money on some gear, go check out those links. Um, those of you that are just getting into ice fishing, if you want a great product for literally pennies on the dollar compared to what you guys pay other companies, go check out Vexen Fishing. Um, they're a huge sponsor of this channel and myself personally, my fishing goals, my youth kids that I work with, everything. Um, go check out their website. They have some awesome ice fishing equipment and a lot of bass gear, musky gear, all that stuff. Go check them out too. Bruiser baits, bass addiction gear. That's where I get my soft plastics from. So that is all in the description below. Discounts if you want them. And once again, I appreciate you guys watching this video, taking time out of your day to watch it, helping smaller fishing channels like this one grow. I greatly appreciate it. Consider subscribing. You guys want to see some ice fishing this winter. We're going to be hitting it hard as often as we can. So I look forward to bringing you guys those videos. And if you do subscribe, go ahead, hit that bell. That way you do not miss any of our videos. It'll let you know when we post so you guys don't miss out on them. As always, until the next video, take care, guys. And tight lines.